Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Airspeed Prime here with my next Avatar comic review. This one is going to be for the 2023 um, Avatar Free Comic Book Day comic. So this one is part of the Star Wars The High Republic Free comic and we get the uh, story Lost and Found here. So um, the main thing to say about this one is just that, look, if you can't get it to your free comic book store today, uh, I unfortunately don't think you're missing out on too much. This is, I think, probably the weakest free comic book day story for Avatar that we have ever had, especially in 2023 to, in my mind, get a, a, a story that is this level of basic and... Um, knowing what they can and have done in the past with these free comic book day books like it it is not a i think a defense of this book that's only 10 pages when other comics which have the exact same page length uh, count have been able to deliver more than this comic so to me this is one of those ones where it is not actively bad it just is very very limited in scope and has no ambition to really tell any particular story or do anything of note um Toph is obviously gets sort of like the focus in a way in this and it's nice but it's also just something that I don't feel like changes all that much because this is a story that is set in the middle of ATLA and um, by my estimation this comic has to take place either uh, directly before a uh, bitter work or directly before the episode before that the chase and um, because it's very early with Toph as part of the group they the, the one point of note here for continuity is that they note that uh, Aang has not yet started his earthbending training it's hard to tell if the events of the chase have happened yet or not I get the impression it is a bit earlier on in their um uh in their journey with Toph here the to the point where like she's still getting used to like oh Katara's showing off some water bending here um and that they're a little bit surprised by some elements of kind of Toph's personality or whatever it doesn't quite feel like we've had the huge argument where uh Toph and Katara are kind of a little bit better now post uh what happens in the chase uh, I think it would have been referenced uh is the idea here that you know with Toph as part of the group they haven't yet had a big incident just yet uh, is the impression I get so I'm going to go with just before the chase um which fits in fine in that like I guess this is what the gang is doing while Zuko alone is happening it's sort of like I think the the idea about this one it is 10 pages and uh, let's just kind of go through it here so we are on Appa here. We're in a kind of Earth Kingdom forest uh, near a stream. Uh, the, the team is just sort of like talking to each other, basically. Um, Katara shows off some water bending. Toph isn't super impressed. Uh, Sokka reveals that he can touch his nose uh, with his tongue. But, uh, you know, Aang just kind of points out that, oh, there's, there's smoke nearby. Um, and they're like, oh, it's probably the Fire Nation. What's going on here? Um, they land at the town and find this dilapidated, basically destroyed town. It's been absolutely wrecked here. And it seems like it wasn't quite Fire Nation, but it was like bandits, I guess. Um, the implication seems to be that like firebenders would be a little bit more almost like exact with the way they kind of burn things down. Whereas this just seems like kind of chaotic. Uh, Sokka notes some tracks. So they address that a little bit and they kind of follow through. Um, and this is where it's noted that uh, both Toph and Momo kind of can sense that there's uh, something else going on here. So Toph, of course, uses the vibrations in the earth uh, to uh, sense out that there's actually a survivor here in the village. Um, this is where you get the sense that it probably is very early with her with the group because um, Aang has to kind of explain to the others that like, oh yeah, like this is how she sees with earth. Um, which I don't think would be the case if it was like too far after that. So it kind of does feel like this is very much like almost like immediately after the blind bandit for the group here. Um, but anyway, Toph uh, quickly just opens up the hole with her earth bending, and uh, we get a couple of nice kind of panels here of just her using her seismic sense to find her way to this uh, young girl character who is kind of 
uh, trapped here uh, underneath kind of all this rubble. And there's a little bit of a mystery about like, wait, 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 like she's kind of like trapped in the middle of solid, solid rock almost. Like what happened? How did she even get in there? They're like, well, what's going on here? Um, so Toph brings the girl out and the rest of the gang is kind of like, oh, hey, what's your name? You know, what happened here? Why aren't you talking? And Toph is just like, hey, you're, you're traumatizing the kid. Give her some space. Um, and they do give uh, the girl some space. And they're like, hey, uh, there seems to be a path kind of going off into the forest. Sokka, can you track this? So um, we basically just trek through uh, to follow these trails. And we have this uh, character who uh, reveals that her name is Lumi, which is spelled L-U-U-M-I. So the focus of this comic is basically just that um, Lumi has been rescued pretty directly by Toph. Uh, Toph seems to be the only character that she'll really talk to, at least initially here. And Toph is just like, hey, I'm an earthbender. I'm really good at it. These are my friends, you know, Katara, Sokka, Aang. Um, and, uh, you know, introduces Momo as well and stuff like that. Uh, she introduces herself. She asks Toph, like, hey, uh, did you lose your shoes like I did? Um, she, she has one shoe on and she's like, hey, Toph, did you lose your shoes? Is that why you don't have any? But she's like, no, because I'm an earthbender, uh, it's better for me to do my earthbending with my feet kind of touching the, the ground directly. And so immediately, like, Lumi's like, oh, that's really cool. So she kicks off her other shoe. Now, she doesn't really make any particular note of this, but it's the one of the teases in the book that like, oh, hey, Lumi probably is an earthbender, which is why she was like managed to kind of protect herself by almost like digging into the the uh, <laughs> the, the earth. Um, because otherwise it's like, well, there's no way she just randomly ended up there. So uh, they kind of come out into a bit of a clearing here um, and you could just get some interaction moments here. Uh, Toph takes uh, Sokka's uh, blubbered seal jerky and gives it to Lumi. And, and you get the idea that, you know, this is sort of like Toph, you know, being quite protective of Lumi here, which uh, is probably a side to Lumi we maybe kind of haven't, haven't quite seen before. Um, but she begins to open up a little bit to the rest of the group. She laughs at Sokka's ability to touch his nose uh, with his tongue. Um, and she likes Toph's earthbending, of, of course, quite a lot. So uh, she's kind of like, hey, do you want to go for a ride, kid? And... We pretty much are in wrap-up mode at this point. Um, so Toph and Lumi on, you know, Toph's kind of like rolling boulder kind of thing she does to kind of like travel on Earth. Uh, kind of flies by a group of people and they're like, oh, Lumi. Like they, they recognize her and it's her grandparents. So she hops off and is just like, hey, you know, you know you're back. Um, and this is where we're finally able to get the sort of clarification on what exactly happened. The survivors from the village left. They were ambushed by bandits who seemed to just be kind of random people on like, what is it, ostrich horses who just uh, literally lit the town on fire with torches. Doesn't seem like it was firebending. They extorted the town for years. And uh, when the town took a stand, they burned everything down and uh, they escaped by running towards the river. Uh, and they kind of, they saw Appa kind of flying overhead. And so that's why they're in or around the same area. And they're kind of all wondering like, but we're shocked that Lumi survived because like we were separated from her. And this is where Katara kind of points out that like, yeah, it's probably something to do with that. And it's revealed that, hey, Toph is actually watching Lumi do some uh, earthbending. So they, there's the, the, the reveal kind of finally coming out. Um, the grandmother reveals that Lumi's mother was an earthbender also and um, they're just like, okay, we're going to return to the village now. Lumi can help us rebuild since she's an earthbender. Toph and Lumi kind of hug goodbye and um, we, again, right at the end here, we're just like, you know, Katara's like, oh, you were, you were pretty impressive back there with Lumi. You sound surprised. I bet Ang, training Ang will be a piece of cake. And she's just like, so about that, uh, as we kind of uh, wrap it up. So, <clears throat> you know, like I said, it's nice, it's fun, but it is very, 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 very basic. Like, will we ever see Lumi again? I'm not sure. And so because of that, what effect does this ultimately have us seeing this side of Toph when in episodes that follow, this doesn't particularly maybe seem to factor in 
And it maybe relates a little bit to, like, the end of Bitter Work, where, like, Toph eventually comes around and realises that, like, Katara's approach was actually helpful for Aang, and that, you know, she was helpful and supportive of Lumi, and that worked, but she took a while to get to where she needed to be to teach Aang. But that's really, I think, adding a lot of, like, extra, it's like retroactive kind of storytelling there to it. It's nice, but I, I've said this many times before with the... Uh, with story content like this when the best thing that I can really say about a comic is just that it's nice and fun uh, I don't think I'm really saying too much it this feels like the definition of that uh, damning something with faint praise um, because basically the idea is that all avatar content that is released should be inherently fun and enjoyable so this comic really only delivering on that kind of core point isn't really saying all that much like at all so yeah I, I really do feel this ends up being probably the weakest uh, free comic we've had across all the avatar and chorus stuff because i think prior to this it was probably some it was probably a toss-up between uh, the milo story lost pets and beach wars from last year um but at least those had kind of like fun more unique dynamics where we got to see kind of something a bit different um this S choosing to set it I think in between episodes just to me is always going to be very challenging unless you do something a bit more notable and make it truly stand out as like a lost episode style thing when it is just a very somewhat forgettable like small scale incident like this it does make the overall comic just feel a little bit like why did this need to happen and especially with the idea that like based on like the creative team involved here it does potentially seem to be the case that this was like meant to be in last year's free comic book day book but was delayed into this one and now i don't know what the case with that was like was there a separate story created for that because i think they said it was going to be about ang and obviously ang is a bit part player in this story this is more of a top focus book so is there still like a missing avatar story out there or was that just some marketing kind of information that went wrong and um, Either way, you know, like we we didn't get an ATLA story last year for Free Comic Book Day. We get one this year, but no Korra story. This really not up to standard, really at all. And and the question I always think about things in terms of like when we get to the end of the year and I'm doing my like top story moments from the year, am I going to be talking about this come the end of the year? And I don't think so. And in the and and that's because you know we're getting a novel. Uh, coming up in, in not too many weeks away and um, there'll be more legends rpg information and um, there's uh, some other comics coming out i don't think that this is going to make the list it, it like literally all those other comics will have to be disappointing to an insane degree to make this moment i think truly stand out in the year and um, and obviously, like, there's some frustration about this. Like, let, let's talk a little bit about sort of the free comic book day sort of, like, issue about the fact that, like, it, it seems like in the UK, this comic was not even available because it was partnered with a Star Wars High Republic Adventures comic. And um, Dark Horse don't have the license to uh, release their kind of comics uh, in the UK of, of under that brand. So that meant Avatar was left out over here. That is frustrating. Obviously, I assume, I assume the digital release will be available at some point. Um, but in terms of a physical release for some people, you're either have to go to, going to go to eBay to get this or wait until they eventually reprint this in like the next Avatar short story collection, whenever that's going to be. But at this point, there is a couple that they need to add in. Like there's the Iroh free comic from what, like uh, two years ago that they need to add in. Now this, um, you know, it's beginning to sort of like add up that like some of these books do need to get uh, a reprint overall. But um, that is basically everything I have to say about the uh, free comic book day book this year. Um, it, I, I, I honestly would say uh, definitely like disappointing that we only got half of a book this year and the half that we got didn't deliver. And I say that as someone who was disappointed with uh, Beach Wars the year before. Uh, but this makes Beach Wars look like an incredible comic because this one was just so basic. I I'll praise it to a certain extent for getting the kind of solid fundamentals correct. But it's, it, to me, it's a bit too basic in 2023 
to have this be your Avatar comic. With Avatar Studios in place, and we're talking about like expanding out the franchise, this is the best we can do? No, no, I, I don't think it's good enough. And I don't, I'm not going to sit here and praise it when I know things can be better than this. Um, so there's my thoughts on it. In the comments, let me know what your thoughts were. But that's been the video. Thanks for watching and bye.